Dr. Chris Colgan of Las Vegas, Nevada, is a chiropractor with 25 plus years experience in running a wellness business. So what happens when a pandemic crawls across the planet and causes almost all business owners with a brick and mortar business to rethink how business is to be done? And even more importantly, where is the extra business funding going to come from to invest and grow the business? Dr. Chris has the answers because he and his business partner and wife, Sandy, found solutions solutions for such a situation. Here's my conversation with Dr. Chris Colgan. Well, Dr. Chris, all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. Aloha from you. <laughs> uh, terrific, terrific. It's good to have you on the pro. Look, there's a lot to, to, to talk about because the subject matter here is something that you've, uh, you and your wife, Sandy, have experienced and uh, as a wellness practitioner, um, as a, uh, a doctor of chiropractic with years of uh, clinical office experience running the business side of things, you know only too well from your side of things what's involved in financing and funding a professional wellness, professional business, right? And you've got some stories to tell. Uh, and I know that our listener and our viewer watching you now will want to hear what you've got to say. So first of all, just some background, Dr. Chris, uh, where where are you and where did you come from? Uh, obviously, your parents, but I mean geographically. What's the story backstory? Well, uh, I'm originally from Hawaii. So out of out of three children, my late mother and grandmother were were born and raised there. And then I was I'm, I'm the oldest of three, and I was born there. My uh, father, uh, so my mother's on the Filipino Hawaiian side, okay, and my father is the Irish French Norwegian side, hence the last name Colgan. Now, the Irish pronunciation is Colgan, but we've always pronounced it as Colgan. Um, and so uh, I pretty much grew up the majority of my life uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, most recently, uh, about three months ago, we moved to uh, near Las Vegas, Nevada, in the town of Henderson. So, uh, and which is otherwise known as the ninth Hawaiian island because there's so much Hawaiian influence here and a lot of people from Hawaii uh, are living here in, uh, in Nevada, in this part of Nevada. So it's pretty interesting. Okay. And um, you often sign uh, off your greetings with mahalo. What does that mean? Mahalo means thank you. Yeah. Okay. So aloha can mean hello, goodbye, uh, farewell. Uh, but mahalo means thank you. Okay, got it, got it, mahalo for that. All right, um, and you grew up and did you know you always wanted to be a health professional, a healthcare provider, or what were your interests? Well, you know, when I was a kid, I always had a fascination with, you know, with aircraft, okay, um, rocket ships, all that, you know, I wanted to be an engineer, that's what I really wanted to be, but uh, math-wise, oh, that was not for me, and when I was 15, uh, I, I visited a chiropractor for the first time, hurt my back trying out for the wrestling uh, team at a, a Unipro Serra High School in San Mateo, California. And uh, my, uh, my friends of the family basically said, no, 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 don't go see the orthopedic surgeon. Go see this guy. He's a chiropractor. And uh, his name was Dr. Nick Athens, who happens to be my mentor uh, to this day. And uh, I met him in 1980, I think it was 1985, 86, and couldn't believe just after one adjustment what I what I experienced. Two years later, I was asked the question in my junior year of high school, hey, what do you want to do the rest of your life? I said, well, we really want to be an engineer, but my math skills are, let's say, not where they need to be. And he says, well, did you ever think about becoming a chiropractor? And I said, you know, I have. Uh, why don't I think about it? And then after doing some really deep thought, I made my decision in my junior year of high school to become a chiropractor and basically program the rest of my life around that uh, up until the age of 25 when I graduated from chiropractic school. And so, yeah, so I've, uh, my parents were very happy that their oldest son figured out what he wanted to do in life and knew what college to go to, what class he had to take. And uh, they were pretty lucky. They, they had a pretty easy ride with, uh, with me taking the, taking the, you know, the helm at that. So uh, it's been a blessing ever since. And, you know, 25 years later, still in practice and, uh, you know, practicing in a different kind of way. Our focus now is mostly weight loss and nutrition. And I've partnered with my wife in this venture the last, uh, since 2014. Uh, we've been really working together and have perfected this business uh, 
perfected in a way where it's working great for us. And of course, you know, as in any business, there's, there's always room for improvement in more ways than one. Yeah, someone once told me the biggest room in the whole world is the room for improvement. Your wife, Sandy, is a specialist in her own right too, isn't she, in business? What's her specialty? Well, Sandy, you know, she, be, prior to being with me, she calls it a, a, a BC before Chris, is, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was a very successful uh, sales trainer. Uh, she had teams of people. She was in the merchant services business, always, you know, exceeding her goals. And plus, you know, by rights, my, my wife is a world champion in a lot of things she does. I mean, growing up, she was a world champion uh, roller skater, ice skater. And then uh, even in the late adulthood, uh, she competed in salsa dancing. Uh, you know, so I have to keep up with her is basically what it comes down to, you know. So and, and everything my wife does, she's just she just really, she does it, she gives it her all. And, and especially when we were married, she really understood what it was like to help people, especially from a, a doctor standpoint or a, a practitioner standpoint or someone to be of service. And it inspired her to learn more about nutrition. And she later uh, became a, a, a health coach through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition or a nutritional therapist is another way of saying it. And so now she helps people transform their own lives through health and wellness and uh, nutrition. So, Excellent. That's wonderful. Uh, um, how nice to hear you speaking of your wife so highly. Uh, and well, thank you. <laughs> a, world, a world champion at everything. I love it. And the, yeah. the VC, I love that too. All right. Yeah. So, Dr. Chris, there is the business of... Uh, being a wellness practitioner, the business of helping people sure. um, and with their pains and ailments and, and, and the like, which our audience member or listener uh, will relate to if they're a wellness pro or starting out as a wellness pro uh, practitioner. But then there's the business behind the business, and that's what we're really looking at here. And the business behind the business really fuel, is fueled by finance and funding. So let's talk about that. Uh, what, what's what been the upside of funding your business over the 20-plus years, I think, you've been a wellness pro, a, a practitioner? Yeah, uh, so 25 years in practice. I started in uh, 1996 uh, okay. as, a, as a, an associate doctor. And then as once I built the practice, you know, it, I was able to go on to different levels and start, you know, basically fulfilling it on my own. Uh, and then later on, uh, about, it took me about a good – five to seven years to open my own, you know, when I felt I was ready to do that. And been so basically I've been my own boss really since I was 25 years of age, you know, so that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's been a nice thing. Um, funding, you know, has always been something that it's interesting, no matter what, where the economy is, whether it's a bull market or a bear market, uh, people still need money. <laughs> okay. For, for various reasons, you got people that, need money because it's helping them have some cash flow, okay, to sustain the business. And then people may need money to also, you know what, they don't want to use their own money because it's tied up in something, but they don't have problems borrowing money to help grow and expand the business to where they want it uh, as, as if they have a plan in place, right? And they're getting that money, let's say, very cheaply. Okay, you have options now where, geez, you can get you know funding uh, from a zero percent you know, APR credit card. Okay, that's when you think about it, that's free money, especially if the terms are eighteen months. Um, you got plenty of time to invest in yourself and then pay yourself back with no interest. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's kind of the American dream, right? You know, it's like, hey, I get to use someone's money for free, and it'll help my credit score. It'll help me get more money in the future. So that way, I I could. The money I truly make, my own money that I truly make, can be used elsewhere to to gain interest and and start uh, working for itself rather than me say working for the money. So, all kinds of ways of using funding nowadays, and that's just a couple of ways of using it. You know. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just say I like what you just referred to um, the the potential. Uh, to find funding for up to 18 months interest, zero interest 
We might come. We're very, we're very low interest, right? I mean, it's zero it's, or very low or no interest. It's a very right, interesting right. concept. I'd like to come back to that, please. So we'll bookmark Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, all right. So bear market, bull market. Everybody needs money. Business people need money to run their business. Let's just say there's an ocean of money available. Let's just say, using our imagination, what are what are the things that a typical wellness pro practitioner is going to use? that funding for in either setting up or maintaining or growing their uh, their practice, their office? Well, the, uh, especially in this past year, I mean, it was for, you know, for at the, you know, the start of 2020, um, a lot of people took that funding as a way of, of making sure that they had something rather than nothing because they weren't sure if their business was an essential business or not. Okay. A lot of practitioners, depending on what state you live in, um, they weren't sure if they're going to be able to see people or if people were willing to come out and see them for care. Okay. So there, there was both sides of the coin on that. We were very fortunate in California. Okay. This is one of the only things I, I, I say positive about California right now was we were considered an, a, an essential, uh, you know, business as a practitioner being of service. So we were lucky with that, but even still, we were running at about 50% capacity. You know, we were only working half days because guess what a lot of people were doing? They were staying home. They didn't want to go out. They were afraid. There was that fear factor. So, you know, during that time, it was great to know that, okay, we have funding to get us through the year, you know, so we could drop our shoulders a little bit. Let's stay focused and let's make sure that we, we make the best decisions possible. And then you got other people too that let's just say, you know, let's say if they were fairly well off, but they got, they were qualified for funding anyways, that helped them really capitalize on a crisis. Okay. So they were, they were looking at, there were certain markets that were, that were worth investing more money into during this crisis. And, uh, and so they may have said, Hey, now's a good time for us to get a new employee uh, because we're finding that we're pretty busy or we need this money because you know what? We want, to, we want to do more investing, especially when it comes to real estate, because the real estate market really never dipped. It kept going, and to this day is, <laughs> is, is still going. I mean, it, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are thinking that something's going to change there, but if you invested some money you know, at the beginning of this crisis, I mean, you, you did fairly well so far. Right. And that's using other people's money at a very low percent interest to invest in other ventures that basically allow them to capitalize on that even more because they weren't using their own money, <laughs> you know? So that was the other good thing about it. But for the, I would say for the most part, it's twofold. One is it's there to support your business, to kind of give you that, that cash flow in case you need it, or to reinvest in your business, to, to do more marketing, hire more staff, or perhaps what do, this is what I did, was get more coaching to learn more things that I've been wanting to learn as I had time during this crisis or pandemic to rather than stay at home, do nothing. I use that time to further educate myself, further rewire myself. Mm. Okay. To see what's next. How, what is that new world going to look like for my business when things start clearing up? Because let's face it, there was a conditioning process that people went through for about two or three months. And there was a conditioning process about, okay, how are people going to view their money now? How easily do they want to spend it on certain things, and how do I show value to the patient for the services I provide that they're willing to spend that that safe, hard earned money to ensure that they don't waste it either? So. Have you seen, Dr. Chris, uh, colleagues uh, needing to or being open to diversify, or dare I say, use that word pivot uh, to using other means uh, for, like, for example, uh, online? Uh, consulting things like that because of the pandemic. Yeah, I'm one of them. Uh, you know, and you know, after looking at all this, I mean, it actually, you know, there's that old saying: never be afraid to take advantage of a crisis, right? Um, and you know, and some of these things, it was bittersweet. You know, we we were we had to do what we had to do, but then we figured out, oh, I could also do this remotely. You know, uh, since like I said, a lot of the work I do is weight loss and nutrition. Well, technically, someone doesn't have to be in front of me or with me in a room for me to give them good advice or strategy, right? I could even I could even 
do a lab, you know, send them the forms, they get the results, I get the results, and I populate the report, share with them, and we could have a call like this and basically go over their findings and give them the recommendations they need to get over whatever they're trying to do in their health, okay? So, yeah, I mean, definitely a, a big part of my practice now is helping people remotely, uh, which is what I'm doing kind of with you right now as we're talking in Henderson, Nevada, even though my practice is in the San Francisco Bay Area. And you're talking to me, here I am in the Philippines. So There we uh, go, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's an interesting point you make, Dr. Chris, because um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, now, who would have thought a wellness practitioner, a chiropractor, could use, would use something like TikTok? I mean, what is tick, to me, TikTok is still the, the hand ticking around the clock. I'm still out of the loop <laughs> here. But right. correct me if I'm wrong, did you not post a short 30 second video giving some uh, nutritional health wellness kind of information, a 30 second video which had 40,000 views and generated 400 comments, including questions within a few days? Actually, it was uh, two days. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was insane. And also, and here was the other staggering, you know, number to, or just really exciting number to think about. It was shared almost 800 times. See, this is just unbelievable. Now, we really need to take a pause here, <laughs> a little video. Now, this is exposure. Let's just talk directly, Dr. Chris, to the viewer, to the, right. to the viewer or the listener listening to you right now. This is so you, the listener, the, the, the viewer may be like me. What the heck is TikTok? Isn't it just teenagers doing the same dance all around the world? But Dr. Chris here has got a different perspective from experience. One short 30-second video giving some information, dressed and looking with the appearance of being with the credibility and authority that comes with the appearance of being, apart from having the, the qualifications. <laughs> right. I shared 800 times, 40,000 views and 400-plus comments. Now, if you don't know what or how to... Uh, leverage online uh, media and marketing, then there's something that could could be an investment avenue for the. Okay, so we need to invest. We need funding, and we need applic and we need uh, financing. Let's get back to this then. So, so how did how did the uh, all right a personal and direct question? How did the turn of events that you know this pandemic that's crawled across the world? How did sure. that affect Dr. Chris and his wife? Sandy and your business and what did you have to do to bounce back? Well, at first, there, you know, it, it, it affected everyone, right? Because we weren't sure what's going to happen. <laughs> and like I said, it was very short lived because within literally within a week or two, we were deemed essential. So we were still in the office. So we were still seeing patients. But the bigger one was my wife and I, we were sharing an office in San Francisco, you know, a couple of days a week. And that's where we said, wow, okay, there's no one in San Francisco anymore. You know, I mean, it, the streets are empty. It was, you talk about post-apocalyptic. That's exactly what it was. And when we would drive up to the city and go, where's the traffic? Where There's like no, Starbucks. When you see a busy Starbucks and it's boarded up, you know things are wrong. You know, it, it's, no, it's no good. It's no bueno. And we were in a building where almost every... 20 minutes, thousands of people would go between in and out of an elevator and that just halted altogether. Right. So it wasn't like we were trying to establish a business in San Francisco. There was no business to establish in San Francisco. Mm. Okay. For a good, you know, six or six plus months. So that's, so we had a quote unquote pivot um, yeah. and really look at, okay, well, we got to, we got to do things a little smarter here. So one, let's, Let's budget. Let's make sure we're not doing anything stupid. Let's look at who we have subscriptions with. Let's contact them and ask them if they'd be willing to, you know, cease our auto debits for the time being, because we really don't know. And everyone was really great about that. You know, they were very compassionate, understanding. And especially since I've been a long customer, you know, a long time customer with a lot of these vendors, they said, no problems, because we have no idea what to do either, you know. And then we said, let's revisit it about two or three months, and then we can make a better decision. In some cases, I, I severed the relationship. In others, it's like, hey, thanks a lot. Let's keep going because I figured out what I truly needed and also what we didn't need anymore, okay, in this new world of doing business 
as a, uh, as a chiropractor or a wellness practitioner. So there was a lot of gifts, you know, a lot of stress that came with it. And fortunately for me, I was with a, a group of other entrepreneurs. They're mostly chiropractors and things like that. And they were always thinking, they were always, uh, you know, posting things to say, Hey, look, if you're, you know, we got to get, don't wait for, don't wait to go get an SBA loan, start, these are some of the things you want to do now. And luckily I also had a bookkeeper that was, uh, you know, ready to help me and, you know, had all my numbers. So that way there was no messing around. It's like, let's, let's start doing this now rather than wait because everyone's going to do it. And then we all know how that goes and it's just going to be a big log jam. So we were very fortunate that both my wife and I, since we both have two separate businesses, two separate LLCs, two separate corporations, we were able to get a substantial amount of funding to support our businesses and to give, to let our shoulders kind of just drop a little bit, knowing that it's all going to work out that peace of mind. Uh, nothing was going to stop me from working hard. I mean, I was still pulling six, almost 16 hour days. Most of them were in front of a computer like this learning, uh, understanding how things are going to be re retooling my sales process, retooling my approach uh, to uh, some of the programs I do for weight loss, learning more about business credit, learning more about, you know, applying for other kinds of loans, just learning more about money, you know, where now I have the time to do this. And it's become somewhat, somewhat of an infatuation now that I, I you know, before it was something I was kind of intimidated by. Now I just can't wait to learn more and see how other people are doing things with their money and how creative they can be. And when you say, uh, Dr. Chris, when you say learning more about money, what do you mean? Well, you know, that there's all kinds of ways of getting money, no matter how bad your credit is, no matter what you've done in the past, it can be repaired. Okay. If you have the right people, if you have, uh, if you're willing to do the work to, you know, and also if you're willing to be a little humble, you know, because it's like, Oh man, I, I know I screwed up and believe me, I, I've screwed up in my past too. I made some mistakes and some decisions that weren't really, let's say the smartest of them to make, but I did it because I thought at the time it was the best thing I could do. Yeah. Uh, I really took on learning and receiving a more of a financial education, something I didn't get in chiropractic school. Mm -hmm. And I figured, Oh, look at this 25 years later, I'm still learning. But at the same time, I'm having fun doing it because I'm seeing, okay, this is, this is, this is so much an easier way of doing things rather than the way I was doing it. And it really has in the last two, two to three years done a great, you know, bit of good for both my wife and myself. Yeah. I'll tell you why I like hearing this from you, because you've got, first of all, you've got this back uh, experience of 25 plus years yeah. Well, you said since your mid twenties you've been a self-employed entrepreneur, but you, in the last twenty-five years, uh, as a as a um, as a wellness practitioner, you graduated from chiropractic college at what age? Uh, I was twenty-five, uh, June of nineteen ninety-six. Oh, okay, not to be specific. And 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 your um, your uh, what are you now? Forty-nine, something like that. It just turned 50. Oh, um, happy birthday, June. mate. A month, a month ago, it just turned 50. Oh, it's terrific. <laughs> I, hope you got, I hope you got to go on that under 50s bus tour before it was too late. Um, <laughs> all right. So I'll tell you what is still ringing in my ears here. Mm -hmm. uh, see, this is why I like talking to you, Dr. Chris, because of the humility. And this is so important. You, you openly have told us that you've made mistakes. Who doesn't make mistakes? You've learned from them. You're still learning. You're still open to be taught and educated. And you're still learning about something called money. And um, all right, so where are you at now with this concept of, because you are in a position to help other chiropractors. Right, right. Yeah, that was, that's one of my values is to be of service and provide value. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's always one of those things is if I'm learning something that's going to add value to what I do, uh, and to others, you know, I have a duty and obligation to share with other people or teach them to do that as well. Uh, and mistakes, I, you know, I learned a long time ago, it's okay to make mistakes. 
because that's how you win. That's how you learn, you know? And so a lot of my friends go, well, Colgan, you made a lot of mistakes. I go, Hey, look, you know, I've made mistakes in my first marriage. I'm, you know, I make mistakes in my second marriage right now. You know I mean? It's, it's, it's one of those things, but you know, we move on and we're always willing to grow and expand and find the gifts of what we've done so we could better ourselves now and forever. Um, what's been really great now has been, I found a, a platform or, uh, a company that I could partner with, you know, as a, as one of, as one of their partners where I could reach out to some of my colleagues or friends, family members too, but mostly, you know, business people or startups and entrepreneurs and let them know that, Hey, look, all this money you've worked so hard for, don't be in a hurry to spend it to grow and expand your business. You could use that money to start doing, putting it away for more investments and borrow money to help grow and expand your business and pay it back at terms that are affordable for you. So you're profitable. So you're not so stressed. And at the same time, your money that you did work that hard for and continue to work hard for is working more for you than you working for the money. For the chiropractor or wellness practitioner who's viewing and listening right now, and they're thinking, I want to know more from Dr. Chris. Where can they go? Do you have somewhere online where they can go and visit? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, they can go to wellnessprofunding.com. And, uh, wellnessprofunding.com. And on that site, there's an option there that says, you know, apply here or, you know, apply for funds now. And the beautiful thing about it is it's a soft pull. It's not going to affect your credit. Uh, it's not going to ding anything about you. It's a soft pull. And we have an agreement with Experian uh, that allows us to do that. So it doesn't, you know, harm the, the applicant's uh, credit or, or show a ding against them or, you know, what's or about disputing it. You know, the, pay, the client doesn't have to worry about disputing it. It's a very, it's all private. You're going to, you're not going to necessarily, you're not, you're not going to be discussing these finances. I mean, my team members will be, you know, contacting you within 24 hours, uh, depending if it's a holiday, eight hours, uh, but they're going to discuss with you what's going on. So they could find out what you best qualify for with that soft pool. Okay. They've done many loans, millions of dollars, that, you know, thousands of applicants. And based on just doing a soft pull, they can determine truly what you're going to qualify for, or even so what you need to do to better qualify for different loans, maybe with lower percent interest. So they're not just going to say, sorry, you don't qualify, see you later, bye. They're going to say, okay, you got some things here. If we worked on them, it would really open up the doors for you to get more cash and also kind of clean up some things that haven't been cleaned up in a while, or maybe that you weren't even aware of that needed to be cleaned up. So that way you could be in a more in a better position of power with your finances from here on out, because now you know. Wellnessprofunding.com, I'll put that uh, domain name in the show notes. And Thank so <clears throat> let me play the sceptic, uh, if I may. So, um, all right, I could go to wellnessprofunding.com. Uh, and did you say there's an application form there on that site? Yeah. Yeah, they just they just fill out. You don't have you don't even have to put your social security number on there. Um, you know, you just fill out the information. It's sent in, and then um, one of the uh, the great people of, of the company will get back to you and review things with you, and and go from there to see what you're truly looking for and why. Okay, so my fear, of devil's advocate, excuse the term. I I I don't want to feel obligated. What's the answer to that? Oh, no obligation at all. I mean, even if you. Even if you do, they feel like, oh yeah, you're definitely going to prove on, be approved for this. You don't even have to. You don't have to go another step further. You can say, okay, well, thank you. I just kind of wanted to see what, based on what you guys are doing and what your experience is. Okay, that's good to know that I, with my current situation, I, I qualify for this. Or if I do some other things, I'll qualify even more. Yeah. Terrific. So the old saying, a problem half shared is half solved. So here's a potential solution to a problem if you're willing to open up i'm speaking dr chris to your viewer and your your listener who's watching and listening to you um, so you might be able to if you like what dr chris has been saying if, you, if you're a chiropractor in the united states then you know uh, very likely now dr chris Cole, and because he's a leading light in there and he's got a lot of respect so um we'll leave it to you i mean i don't have to pitch this dr sure. uh, dr chris uh and so wellnessprofunding.com. And 
So what's been the turnaround in being able to, for you and Sandy, your wife, what's been the turnaround? What's been the difference in being able to have extra funding available to fund your business during difficult and unusual times in the last two years or more? Well, just it takes a lot of stress off you, you know, especially in a marriage or in especially a marriage that has a business partnership like ours, you know, that's a lot of stress, right? And the number one reason for divorce or cause of a divorce is finances. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there, there were some times where it very well could have gone that way. Uh, but since, again, my wife has the attitude of a champion, you know, she never says die. She, she's all about, hey, look, how are we going to win this game? It's not like we can't win this game. It's how are we going to win this game? How are we going to get through this? We're always in the how. There's never, we don't use the word I can't. That's not in our vocabulary. And I highly suggest people take that out of their vocabulary too, because when you say I can't, you have eliminated all forms of possibility, okay? But when you're in the how, possibility always and will exist. Love it. I bookmarked something you mentioned earlier in our conversation as we begin to wind up this conversation, Dr. Chris. I bookmarked something you said about the possibility, the potential to have up to 18 months of no or low interest funding. I mean, is that really possible? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm living proof of it. You know, so, you know, if, you know, you may. So let's say uh, case in point. You know me. I had a couple. I have a couple. I have a couple of credit cards that, let's say, have a higher percent interest rate, and I qualified for through you know through the company I work with. Uh, they were able to find me funding through various credit cards at zero percent financing for eighteen months. So rather than I could transfer funds from a, some of my higher interest cards into these zero percent interest cards, and these are revolving credit cards. Okay. So these are revolving lines of credits or, or revolving lines of credit or credit cards. And so I could just keep funneling money through this, you know, paying it off at 0%. So that way the interest is not going to kill me um, and I can catch up and guess what it's going to do. It's going to make my credit look better because now my utilization is going to go down. You know, once we get the debts off, right, it's going to show with certain cards, they're going to have, you know, less than 30% or 20% utilization, which credit, you know, credit companies love. But here's the other thing that a lot of my colleagues don't, aren't aware about is the world of business credit or business lines of credit. They don't report to the three bureaus for personal credit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this was something that really opened a lot of ah ahas for me. It's like, oh, I've been using some, some of my credit cards I've been using as a form of doing business credit but I didn't realize there was actual business credit cards I could use that don't report to your Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Right. Okay, right. So that was another big thing. So if I want, so now I could expense things better, get the credit transfer credit from some of those personal cards onto a business line that doesn't report to those bureaus, it shows my utilizations down, my credit score goes up. Now I'm going to qualify for better lending and better credit cards at zero to low percent interest rates. Yeah. Dr. Chris Colgan and wife Sandy, like many professionals, had a situation where they needed to pivot and uh, rethink, uh, consolidate and uh, seek further funding. And that was the problem. And it gets worse for some people, doesn't it, Dr. Chris? Because some people are so totally in the dark, they don't know who to turn to or what to do. Yeah, there, there's a lot of crazy things going on right now. You know that, just like we were saying, you know, never be afraid to take advantage of a crisis. Well, there's people doing that too in a negative way. They're really right. taking advantage of people, screwing them over, you know, taking their money and running, um, putting so, you know, just kicking someone when they're really down. That's the unfortunate thing, right? And we all know what's going to happen to those people when their turn comes. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> but the thing is, the, the biggest thing is there's always a way out of your problem. There, it's never, it's never like woe is me. It's never that I'm never going to get out of this. It's you just got to you know hang out with people that are uh, that are willing to lift you up. That if you're willing to be lifted, and at the same time, if you're willing to 
go out of the way to learn something new that's going to take your life in a very short period of time from ground zero to wherever you want to be, depending on how motivated you are. And also depending on, you know, how much your back is against the wall. I find that when my back is against the wall, for some reason, I tend to work a little bit you know, more intensely or get things done a little bit more quickly. So yeah. there, there's nothing wrong with having that fire lit because in more ways than one, it's actually a good thing to have. It keeps things real. <laughs> yeah. I lo- <clears throat> Excuse me. I love it, Dr. Chris. I really do. I love that um, positivity that you and your wife, uh, Sandy, have. And <clears throat> I love the fact that you're in this position to add value to your colleagues in the wellness professions and specifically chiropractors and other wellness practitioners, excuse me, <clears throat> you're in a position, you and your wife, Sandy, you're in a position to be able to uh, add value based on practical experience. It's one thing to know and it's one thing to have experience from your knowing, and this is where you're coming from and your wife, Sandy's coming from. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris, for coming onto the show, the Comeback Coach podcast. The comeback in this situation is from financial um, right. negativity, um, confusion, uncertainty. And what's your parting words, if I may prompt you? What parting idea do you have that you want to share? I would say this. The biggest thing is never be afraid to ask for help. No matter what it is, it's okay to ask for help, whether it's finances, marriage, relationships, personal, anything. If you don't ask for help, there's great people out there that are willing to help and they can't help you if they don't know you need it. And, uh, and that has been something I learned, you know, quite a bit in the last few years. And, uh, and when I don't know something, you know, I, I ask for help. I ask, I go, Hey, do you guys know anyone who deals with this? You know, cause I have no clue how to deal with this. I need to talk to someone about this. I need to consult with someone about this, but they're out there you know, and, and vet these people, you know, get references, find out who, you know, who has a specialty in this and why, why would you, why would they want to work with them? You know, I'm a big, I'm big on knowing, you know, having, being, you know, whoever I'm going to work with is because they were referred to me or I was referred to them, you know, uh, from someone who I find credible and respectful. So that, that's the big thing. It's just, don't be afraid to ask for help. It's the most human thing you can do. It's free. It's free to ask. And um, <laughs> from what yeah. I can gather, it's free to go to wellnessprofunding.com and ask by submitting an application without any uh, obligation. That's actually exactly right. All right. Exactly. Wonderful, Dr. Chris. Thanks again for joining us. And to you, the listener, to you, the viewer, uh, I certainly hope that you've gleaned some uh, inspiration, motivation, insights from what Dr. Chris Colgan has shared about financing and how it's possible that your financial situation right now could be improved, but all you've got to do is ask. This is Mike Searle signing off from another episode of the Comeback Coach podcast. Dr. Chris, mahalo. And aloha. <laughs>